this video, I'm going to be showing you how I edit my portraits. And for this demonstration, I'm going to be using Luminar. You can also use Lightroom or any other software that has the same capabilities. Uh, I've been using Luminar. It's very similar to Lightroom that I've been using. I'm going to be using that as a demonstration. After that, I'm going to be using Affinity Photo, uh, but you can also use Photoshop or any other softwares, but the same principles a lot, uh, are the same. All right, so um, we're going to edit this photo right here, and this is my friend Andrew that I took a shot of. And first, we just want to look at the photo and to see if it's balanced, as in the color. Uh, it looks pretty balanced to me, so I'm pretty much not going to mess with the temperature right here. So as you can see, if I moved it, it went to the cold. If I move it to the right, it's going to be a little bit warm. So I'm going to just leave it where it was at before. So it looks okay to me. And uh, for the smart contrast, I do like to up it a little bit, just a slight bit, just to have some more contrast. Not too much because this one actually gets a little bit out of hand. So probably up to 10. Usually I like to do the highlights to decrease it. So he kind of pops out a little bit more. And this background is going to actually go away. So um, it doesn't really matter if, you know, the, the background kind of shows. So, so I'm going to decrease it uh, probably around minus 35. All right, and then the shadow, uh, usually depending on if I want to show uh, the person's face more, I'm going to increase it or decrease it, but usually I like to increase it so they're a little bit more visible. So for this one, I'm going to do plus 35, and that's pretty much a good ballpark right here. All right, so after that, I'm going to go to this thing called color right here, Luminar, and I like to up the saturation. I like to give them a little bit more color to make them look a little bit more vibrant and tan. So for this, usually I like to do 10 to 20, depending on the person. Uh, if they're a little bit more light skin, probably more saturation. Uh, for this one, I'm going to do 10. And so for the vibrance here, I like to increase it quite a bit. It doesn't look too bad, even if it's maxed out. So I like to probably go to 35 again. That's a good safe number right there. And uh, you don't want to go too high with this because, you know, the person starts to look like a cartoon. So you want to just enhance the person, but not overly do it. So after that, I'm going to go to details enhancer and I like to do minus 20 or minus 10 depending on the person. And this really just helps me with the editing part for the Photoshop part. Um, you basically get rid of any extra details. Um, it's actually good to not have a lot of details, especially on the face area. So the, uh, the bags under the eye show or the lines on their head show. So it's actually good that it's more of a cleaner look. Uh, after that, that's pretty much it from here. So then I will go to this part where it says uh, AI skin enhancer. And this will just help me again with the Photoshop part. So I do AI skin detects uh, defects removal. So usually I go to up to 50. That's just a safe ballpark number. It really depends. And I'm going to do most of the editing later. All right. And then after that, uh, I like the face light. As you can see, if I max it out, it gets a little bit out of hand. I'm going to show you. It's in, And then this is what it looks like. So I usually like to go to 50 first. And that looks pretty good. But I think, again, maybe around 30 to 35. Just a little enhancement is needed. All right, red eye removal, nothing needed. Eye whitening, uh, maybe a little bit. And so I'm going to increase that by 10. Eye enhancer, maybe a little bit for 10. Uh, dark circles removal. I'm going to do most of this in Photoshop, but yes, uh, my friend Andrew definitely needs it. So we're going to go to 50 right here. But again, don't worry too much about the dark circles removal or the lines or anything on the face. Most of it will be done in Photoshop. All right, slim face. Uh, usually I like to give them a little bit of a slim face. I don't want to go too crazy with this. Usually around 10 to 20 just to slim them up just a tad bit. Um, his eye size is pretty good. And so usually I like to leave it around 10. So that looks pretty good to me. Eyebrows. And if you want to make it a little bit thicker. So yeah, maybe around 15. All right. Lip saturation. Uh, if it's a woman with lipstick, usually I like to do lip saturation. Uh, for him, I like to leave it neutral. Uh, lip redness. It looks like it's going to be zero. Lip dark darkening. Uh, it's going to be fine. And then teeth whitening. I'm going to go up to 50. I would like to make their teeth extra white just so it can pop out. It has to just a little bit. All right. So that's about it for this part. And we're going to actually come back uh, to Luminar later 
and uh, we're gonna do the or the Orton effect and the high key but we want to get rid of this background first so we're gonna actually save this photo and then we're gonna go into the affinity photo all right so now we're at affinity photo this is a software very similar to Adobe Photoshop so if you have Adobe Photoshop that's okay too or any other similar softwares that has the same tools all right okay so this is a PNG file that I exported from Luminar and so this is the file right here first I like to go to this band-aid thing right here and I like to go to blemish removal that's the first thing I do all right so I like to zoom in so on my Mac I'm doing command plus so I went in and um, what I do is look for like these dots or I like to call it earthquakes on the face or craters and pretty much I just try to remove them and like this run right, right one right here like the circle thing so I go to the width right here and I click on it and then I just try to remove it so it looks a little bit better here and I just look around and even this area right here, I just want it cleaner. So I will remove all these little circle things. And you really have to look closely at the monitor. That's why it's really important to zoom in. I mean, if you really need to go in for it, hey, zoom in and just try to look around uh, the person's face. Also, too, not just the person's face, but I do like to look around the neck region as well, uh, just to clean it up a bit, too. And so I'm just going to look around. So I'm pretty much done here on the mouth area. See, there's a circle thing right here. So I'll remove that. And the style that I have is, I wouldn't say the person looks near perfect, but I would say that I just try to uh, take out any flaws on the face. So... Usually when my clients arrive for the photos, they are often tired. They have a work, they have a work day ahead of them and so I just try to help them out. So they may be they might be sweating, maybe it's summertime, so yeah, their face is not perfect all the time even if they wear makeup. So we want to just help them out. So that's what we're doing right here. And you might think this is not a big deal like hey, how come you know, you're doing this, is it going to be a big difference? And yeah, you will see there will be a big difference um, once we're done with this. So, and you want to do best as you can just to capture most of them, if not all of them. For these lines, uh, you can do this too. I just sometimes just go in a row like this. Usually I use a brush for this part, but you can do this too with this tool. So, but it's not perfect. It just, you just kind of try to, try to uh, smudge it out a little bit and just get rid of the lines. All right. So you see this part right here where it's like a line. Yeah. You definitely want to get rid of that. This line right here, again, you want to do the same thing, just smudge it out. And we're going to actually go back to these areas. All right, so continue to do that. And then after you're done, uh, you want to go to a different tool. All right, so we're done with this tool right here. As you can see, it improved the photo a little bit. And then now we're going to go to another tool right here, and it's going to be called the Healing Brush Tool. All right, so this one is great because it really just takes out the flaws. And right now it's at a 29 width. I'm going to put it to 20. And see, I'm going to go to this neckline right here. There's this line right here. And this part, you have to press Option. And now I'm on my Mac. And you click a part where you need to make it the similar skin right here. So I'm going to leave it here and it's going to and I have to drag it to the the area right here. So as you can see, it changed and just blend it in with the similar color, I believe, on this area. I know it looks very apparent like, you know, like, hey, that kind of looks uh, apparent that it's brushed over. But when you zoom out, it's not going to be shown. So don't worry so much. And you can always just try to blend it in just by doing it multiple times and going on the outside of the area. As you can see, I'm doing, I'm just trying to smudge it out. And then let me just show you real quickly. See, you really can't tell, right? It just looks very silky smooth, I would say. All right, so I go to this area, option, click on the area of the skin right here. And then I'm just going to brush that out. I kind of wish my friend Ann just shaved a little bit right here just for a cleaner shave. So I'm going to help him out a bit. So there you go. This red area, you want to smudge those out. And that's about it. That looks pretty good. See, if you see his neck, it looks very clean now. All right, so let's go to the face. Same thing. Let's go to the chin area. I'm going to go to the left side. And we're going to just fix it. So... And as you can see, I'm just trying to make a clean path around his facial features right here. As 
see how it looks. See, you can see it's a lot cleaner now. We're going to work on his nose right here, this triangle area. So click on it with the, the option. And you just want to help them out. Usually people have a little bit of work that was that is needed in the tip of their nose. So I try to help them help them out with that area. And then this red area, as you can see here, you, you just want to clean that up for them. And yeah, I know it's really getting up close to their face. So yeah, and again, like I said, it doesn't have to be super perfect. Like you have to get every single spot. Just We're just enhancing their face. We're just trying to make it a little bit better. See these little earthquakes? I try to get rid of them. And my lighting was not the best. As you can see, I kind of went a little extreme, so this white area. So even that, you want to smooth those parts out. Yeah, so, but I will say that in my experience, the more lighting you have, it's a little bit better. It's actually really hard if it's super dark and you have to like use brightening tools to make their face brighter. So I actually rather have it really bright and then make it darker. It's a lot easier on the editing personally for me. So yeah, as you can see, I'm just smudging out the light area and then it'll, it'll make his face a little bit better. All right, now let's go to the other side, this white area. All right, so now we worked on the face and now what we're gonna do is work on the, the bags under the eyes. So it's gonna be the same tool. So again, you wanna click around the face right here. I did an option. And we just want to get rid of these lines and smooth it out. And we're going to do our best to blend it in. And you're going to see a big difference on the face. So again, you want to blend it in. So just try to go around the eye too a little bit. All right, so this is what it looks like. And if we zoom in, I think it looks a lot better without the bags under the eye. So this is what it looks like. So now that we worked on the face, I'm going to show you how to change the background. And uh, actually, before we even work on the face, I changed the background first. But I just wanted to show you the face ahead of time because that is the most important part of this whole video. All right, so now what I'm going to do is to get rid of this background, use this erase tool. And I'm going to use the erase brush tool. And this part's very easy because all you're doing is just getting rid of the background that is not near him. Zoom in. All right, so the, for this part, um, it gets a little bit difficult if you go too close. So you can either zoom in and erase it carefully, or you can use this magic wand tool right here on the left. And I'm just going to click an area. And as you can see, it's trying to delete the area. And so I'm going to click it, and then I'm going to press delete. It looks OK, but as you can see up, up on the top, you can see that there was a missing area. So I'm going to zoom in, click that area, and then delete. And you might see a little bit of residue there, but that's okay. We're going to go to the next area. So zoom out a little. Looks good. Another residue area. We're going to leave that again. This area. All right. We want to go to the erase tool right here. And I'm going to go back to erase brush tool. And then I press command D to get out of the magic wand selection. And just brush it up. If you go really close, you still might see some residue. Like on the hair, you kind of see it still. So, so yeah, you can kind of see it. But when you zoom out, you really can't see it. So I wouldn't say it's much of a big deal. So even for this part, you can get the magic tool, uh, magic wand tool out. And then we can just select certain areas. And you really don't have to do this. I mean, nobody can see it. But I like to, you know, be detailed as possible when I edit my photos. So, and um, yeah, I just want to make it as nice as possible. I'm getting my erase tool out again and again cleaning up that top of the hair. 
no one's going to see this area. So especially when you put the background image on it, because that is what we're going to do. So just make sure. And I like to clean it up, even with this hair sticking out. Just look around again, see even this area, hair sticking out, make it cleaner. There's that little area right there that's sticking out. You want to get that right there, all right? See, as you can see, there's a lot of residue that was not deleted, so you just want to clean that up. Okay, I'm going to get a bigger width. Clean this area. They probably can't even see this, but like I said, you just want to do your best to get all the details out. Maybe there's that one person that's just going to zoom into your photo. Who knows, you know? So you want to just make sure nobody sees anything. You can kind of see this area uh, where the clothing was actually deleted. So we're going to come back to that later. I'll show you um, how to bring stuff back into the photo. And that's why sometimes that magic wand tool is not the best tool to use because it will delete parts that you don't want to be deleted. And so that's why you got to be careful with the magic wand. I mean, if you have all the time in the world, yeah, use the erase erase uh, brush tool. But, you know, the, the magic wand tool does speed up the process quite a bit. As you can see, even this part is just taking a very long time. But... Sometimes it's worth it, sometimes it's not. You gotta just choose your battles here. See, I'm helping him out, shaping his face again right here. Get the magic wand tool, get these little areas. I don't want them, so go back to the erase brush tool. Command D to get out of that, and then. And you're gonna see there's gonna be a big difference, even though these are just small details. Yeah, and what I like to do is I like to go around the person's head to help shape it. So this person's hair was sticking out. See, so yeah, I shape that area. Go back to the magic wand tool, these areas again. See, right there. And right now you see all this residue. Clean it up. Command D to get out of the magic wand tool. Make your eraser smaller just to get that little area out. And we're just shaping the hair now. And I know it doesn't look the best on his hair, but when you zoom out, it's going to look fine. All right, so this is what it looks like with all the background gone. As you can see, that was just a very tedious process, but very necessary. So I have a background photo already ready. It's like a studio background, and it's kind of green, like a blue-green background, so I'm going to use that. All right, so I got my background right here, and I'm just going to drag it in. I'm just going to increase it. And your background could be anything that you want it to be. I got this from Envato Elements, I believe, and I changed the color. And that's what I did with this photo. And this is what it looks like. Oh, and now you can see that there's some parts where I missed because I did not see it with the white background. So let's delete that. You really want to make sure you want to get all those areas. All right, so this looks pretty good, right? Um, so now what I'm going to do is just look at his face again, and I just want to brush it up. So I see something on here. There's some residue from that background. I want to maybe clean up his chin right here, and you just want to have a nice look at his face. Just see what else is missing. Uh, sometimes I actually even look at their hands if I want to actually brush up their hands. Uh, so that's another thing you can do. And now what I'm going to do is, yeah, just fix up that hair right here and the top of his head. So you want to make sure you click on Andrew, the person, and not the background because you're going to delete the background. Go to the brush tool. Oh, excuse me, the erase brush tool. And just delete that area. It wasn't a big deal. Like, if I didn't delete this part... You probably could not see it, but for me, I, I was able to see it. And again, like I said, you want to make it as nice as possible. So, all right, so that looks good. Let's zoom out. Much better. You can't see it now. All right, so now let's go to the 
top of his head. And there's all these hairs right here. So this is where the Photoshop software is really good. I really like this feature. So I'm going to show you what I do. All right, so what you're going to do is going to go to In Painting Brush Tool. And you're going to just blend in these areas right here. I'm going to just try to clean out those areas, shape it, and then let go. Okay, as you can see, it blended it in a little bit. So now we're going to brush it up again. But what it did, it actually just added in hair. Uh, now I'm again brushing up because I see more flaws. And again, you know, you might have to keep going back to this. You know, you, you want to make your art nice as possible. And yeah, it's really because of the background. That, that was the hard part. So, but in order to have this nice blue green background, I, you know, you got to put some work into it. All right. I think that looks pretty good. And now we're going to do the final touch. So we're done here now. So we're going to leave this and we're going to export it and then go back to Luminar. All right, so we're back at Luminar. We finally did the Photoshop part and now we're back here. Now you might think this looks pretty good. And then now what we're going to do is going to add the high key and the Orton effect. All right. So let's go to the high key first. Go to edit mask and I'm going to use this brush tool and I'm going to brush him and you just want to go a little bit around him to have the spacing down and yeah you're only going to target his area right here and just try to shape it nicely too it actually looks pretty good if you shape it and I go a little bit outside just because it will just look a tiny bit better on the whole high key effect. And the head area, I do like it a little bit bigger, personally. It doesn't have to be very skinny. Get the elbow. Looks good. I like to go to 20 to 25. As you can see, it just got a little bit brighter for him. So watch. You can go really bright. Nothing. He got a little bit brighter. He kind of popped out a little bit on the photo. Let's go to the Orton effect. Let's go to the brush. Same thing. Go around him. It's okay if it's a little bit bigger. I don't like it too skinny. Get that elbow. Again, just go for the shape. Remember to brush every single area. I'm not letting go of that left click on the mouse. I like to go to 20 again. And that's it. And you want to see how it looks like. So it gets kind of weird and blurry for him. This is normal. And this is the regular mount. And that is it. And just export it. And you are done with your portrait editing.